my friends. Hope everybody's having a wonderful weekend so far. Uh, I wanted to jump in here and make a real quick little video over the uh, fractal pattern that I'm watching uh, based off of the chart that I posted on Twitter. Uh, the only thing that I did differently was I did add uh, a couple more arrows um, right here on uh, these, these purple arrows, and I'll talk about those here in just a second. Um, I am not a fractal expert by any means. I don't know that anybody is. But um, I, I do believe in fractals. I do believe there's certain patterns that play out over and over and over and over and over again uh, on AMC. By far and away, I think the best person to follow on this is going to be uh, Mr. Booksy. Um, his videos are amazing. They are really long. And if you don't know what to look for, his charts can be a little confusing at times as far as what the heck am I looking at if, if like you're completely... A novice, even though he does a great job explaining that. So I always um, say, you know, watch his stuff. Um, this idea is completely my own. I mean, it definitely ties into some of what he's talking about. Um, but it, but essentially, what I tweeted out was that each one of these sections, um, the red, the blue, and the yellow section on AMC's chart, are essentially they're they're all the same. The only difference that plays out is how long does each one take and then the levels at which the moves take place. Um, like I've said multiple times before, what matters is key moments of support and resistance. Everything that happens in between those moments to a large extent, it's just kind of noise, okay? So that's why I always try to preach too. Don't get too lost in the weeds, you know, of watching what's going on on the one minute chart or even the five or the 15 minute. You know, that's, that's great if you wanna go, what am I looking for specifically for today? Um, but as far as what what does the bigger move actually look like, then I need to think you you need to stay a little bit more uh, zoomed out. So I primarily try to use the one, the four hour, and the daily charts um, when doing my stuff. So right now, guys, uh, I'm on the uh, daily chart. I am going to go to the hourly chart. Um, also, too, this isn't using the uh, regular candles. This is using the Heikinashi candles. Um, which are basically kind of momentum candles. Um, it just makes everything look way smoother on your chart um, when it comes to what the actual line looks like. Doesn't have gaps and things of that nature. Doesn't have the actual like what candlestick patterns you should be looking at. Normally I, I use the regular candles, but um, this is what I'm using for. I, I definitely think using the Haganashi when you're doing fractal stuff is the better way to do it. So um, looking at this, I think essentially the red box down here and the yellow box right here are going to be the exact same thing. The only difference is think of the yellow box as like, you know, if you will, like an accordion. Think of it, the red box is like it, it's all squished. And then now what they're doing is they're just they're widening this bad boy in, in the yellow box. But every single one of these runs, patterns, fractals, however you want to describe them, has, in my opinion, what I would describe as the buy button collapse okay so right here you had this run up um, and then massive drop you had this run up massive drop you had this run up and the massive drop happened it was just stretched out it didn't happen till right here okay so when when taking everything into consideration you can see how in the Jan to June run, they just didn't, they weren't able to bring it back down here into these, you know, $3 ranges or anything along those lines. But that's what happened right here. I believe they almost lost control right here, okay? Um, because you can see that, for instance, on the June run, it's a little bit more natural movement, while this January squeeze right here just kind of caught everybody off guard and it just drastically shot up and they were about to uh, lose control money everything along those lines so they shut the buy button off so but if you look this buy button collapse pre-january area then came down and when it started getting pushed down real hard it, it acted as support, and then once it acted as res resistance again, then we got pushed way down. We had the spring, small run up, consolidation, larger run up, more consolidation, um, and, and then kept moving right along, okay? Um, and and these this orange arrow shows, you know, it got stalled right here just a little bit. So as you can see, got stalled right there just a little bit. So uh, I do believe we have found our floor 
And so I'm going to be looking for this type of move right here. You can see this little run up here happen. Then it kind of pulled back and we consolidated. So I don't know if that's going to happen right here. I don't know if we're going to run up a little bit more to like, you know, 25 or so, then pull back. But I do think we're going to see a little bit of consolidation right in this area before we move back up here. This area right here, as you can see, we're then going to trade around, okay? So from a buy button collapse point to right here, so obviously a buy button collapse point right in here. Then we traded around it. Um, we broke underneath. We tried to break back up. We got rejected. We tried to break back up again and then got yanked down hardcore. And once again, I think that's you know largely due to part of what they can do and what the computers can do when the overall market is showing a lot of weakness. So I think we'll consolidate here. And the next move up I'll be looking for is up here into this $28 to $30 range right here. Um, and then you can also see with each one of these, these little tops right here, look, that's where it stopped. So the previous high right here, that's where it stopped and consolidated for a little bit. Let me zoom in here just so you can see this a little bit better, okay? So the previous high right here, that's where we kind of stopped and consolidated. Once again, I believe we almost lost control right here. I don't think it was ever supposed to get up that high um, just between buying pressure options and everything like that and the computer automatically doing its buying and selling. That's when they realized, oh crap, this thing's about to you know, lose control. They shut the buy button off. Then they get right here, come up, trade right in here before the next run up, okay? And look, this little pause right here. No wonder it acted as support right here. So all in all, that's what I'm going to be looking for is this move right here, probably into the low 20s, maybe, you know, maybe up in here. I mean, I mean, once again, fractals are always way easier to see and go, ah, dang it, that's what happened right there when, when you're looking back. Predicting what they do in the future is incredibly hard, and that's why you guys know I'm not a financial advisor. I'm here for entertainment purposes. You know, you got to trade your plan. I'm never going to shame you for whatever, you know, plan you trade um, because I don't want anybody shaming me, you know, for the same way. So I think a move here, let's call it in the 20 to $23 range, if, once again, if we play out pretty similar, which I think we will. And then we're definitely going to have a pause right up in here. Then we'll move up, and it's not until we start getting up here. And uh, you know, for me, some people have even talked about you know right here. Uh, but for me, you know, I'm really gonna want to see you know a move up because I mean you can see how all the other previous times it's doesn't have to do the same thing but it's done it two times before so kind of move up here into the 52 before eventually you know we look for a new markup um, and then once again my friends um, how I do my markups is the fib uh, extension which you go from your low to your high to your next low that 3.618 has always been a pretty solid indication. So right around that, that 250 range would be the area I'd be looking for uh, for the next markup. So anyway, I hope it helps. I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. If you have a big Super Bowl party um, and you enjoy uh, a bunch of beverages, if you will, please be smart. Call an Uber. I want everybody to stay safe so we can enjoy the markets next week. But I'll have a much longer video. The main reason, too, lastly, is... A lot of the indicators are lining up the same way as they did back in here. That's why I think we can anticipate a January um, style move. So, but once again, all three of these to me are the exact same. It's just the level, the price levels that things take place at and uh, the time in, in which it takes them to take place at is, is really gonna be the only difference. So we'll see. Hope that helps. You know the deal. If it does help, please like and subscribe. Um, if it doesn't help, please be a troll. It's what you get at. Just messing with you guys. Y'all have a great weekend.